Dim was goodbye, our last installment. So this will just be a little bit longer, a little more tedious, but you've done all of these steps. You've already got this, unless you just watched it just straight through. Um, let's get after it. Hey, look, there's the Moss Theorem again. Our question now has it in our standard form, and it says use the Moss to find what that's going to equal, and we're going to leave our solution in standard form. Now, you, you could look at something like this and go, oh, what do you mean? Negative 5 plus 5i, negative 5 plus 5i, negative 5 plus 5i, and then you do it a test, but you know what you wouldn't be doing? You wouldn't be using the moz. So while you could do that, that one, if you wanted to on your homework, you wouldn't be able to do that on a test because it asks you to use the moz there. So first, 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 let's talk about what's our z. Our z is negative 5 plus 5 i and we're going to take that z and we're going to raise it to the fourth power but first we need to get that thing in our trigonometric form so we're going right back to 4.4 doing the whole same rigmarole the game let's build this thing up let's get it into the trigonometric form maybe it's 4.3 i don't know i'm, I'm losing it here um uh, so let, let's just go right ahead and we're like well let's go find our radius well our radius is just going to be the square root of our component squared and our two components are going to be what negative five and positive five so it looks like we get what 25 plus 25 is 50 right that's 50 but do you mind can we reduce this thing down a little bit can we call this the square root of 25 times the square root of two you know you got two quarters in your pocket you got 50 cents so we can say that r is equal to five root two have you started to catch that pattern yet when it's the same damn number and it's that number times root two have you gotten that yet? Saves you time. Patterns are dope. All right, neato. Neato. Okay, um, now we gotta get the angle, but the angle's always a little dangerous. We wanna kinda look at this. So we're saying like negative real, positive imaginary, or negative x, positive y. So we'll just do one of these off on the side and be like, uh, negative x, positive y, that's up here in the second quadrant. So it means when we go and use our inverse tangent, we're going to need to think about that and go, all right, we need to be in the second quadrant in between pi over two and pi, right? So let's take our stuff and we'll pop it on in and we're going to say the tangent of our angle is going to be equal to our B over A. So the five over negative five. So tangent of theta is equal to negative one. So now if we're going to use our inverse, it's going to tell us that our answer is negative pi over 4, right? If we run through this thing, we're like, do, 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 angle, hit it with an inverse of negative 1, and that equals negative pi over 4. But that can't be the freaking answer. But we had learned from before that if we want to do this, if we're not in the right quadrant, we don't want to say that. We want to say it's this plus pi. We want to add pi to our answer, put it in the proper quadrant. So now we have negative pi over 4 plus pi, and that is 3 pi over 4. And that makes a hell of a lot more sense for us. So there it is. We have our, our radius is equal to 5 root 2, and our angle theta is equal to 3 pi over 4. So let's rewrite this and say that z is equal to 5 root 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. Cool, using what we used before to solve some new stuff. Now we can play our game. Now we can start raising things up to the fourth power. Uh oh, these numbers are going to get big. You're going to be able to handle it? Of course you can. You've got a calculator if you, if you get a little a little behind so let's take this thing we're gonna raise it up to the fourth power let's see if we can't see if we can't get this so we're like z to the uh, fourth power so that's gonna be five root two to the fourth oh my gosh that number is gonna be humongous that's gonna be a big old number but no no worries we got this thing then we're gonna say cosine of I should give myself a little bit more space plus i sine of 
and let's go four times, four times our angle, which is three pi over four and three pi over four. Good news when we look at this thing, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see that those uh, those fours are just gonna yeah yeah they're all just gonna go away. And they keep messing. I'm gonna leave that one blank for just a second. We're gonna get cosine of three pi plus i sine of three pi times five root two. So okay, five root two raised to the fourth power is. Uh, uh, so five to the fourth, I think that's uh, I think that's six twenty-five, and then so this is what six twenty-five, and then the square root of two to the fourth, that's times four. So six twenty-five times four, twenty-five hundred. Wow! All right, fascinating. Twenty-five hundred. Now cosine of three pi is the same thing as cosine of pi, so that's equal to negative one. Sine of any multiple of pi is equal to zero, so we're going to get zero of those i's. Hiya! We just bring this thing on in, and we're going to find out that our answer is negative twenty-five hundred. Oh my gosh! Huh? We took this. We took this complex number. We raised it to the fourth power and found out that our answer is negative 2,500. You are going to have a few of these games. I think the last four problems out of your homework are going to be dealing in this manner. So you're going to have to take it first, convert it into our trigonometric. Then you're going to have to play the Moise game. And then you're going to need to reduce it back on down into our standard form. So there's fun with the Moise. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Just keep grinding through this stuff. If you can find the motivation, you can get through this part. You're through the toughest part of the class. It's just the notation, and with just a little bit of time and effort, the notation starts to become a little bit more clear. So, good luck, y'all, and I will see you in the next chapter.